Welcome back to the course, Engineering Data Analysis. We will resume with our topic discussion on obtaining data. We are done discussing surveys. We now proceed with the uh, design of experiments where we have two options of collecting data by observation and uh, or uh, experiment. Both use uh, the design of experiments tool or method in the discussion of these two kinds of studies, uh, we will encounter correlation and causation. In an observational study, uh, data is collected in such a way that collection directly interferes with generation of data. This way, only uh, observation of variables is performed. Uh, this results in the association of uh, the observed uh, our correlation of the observed variables only correlation and not causation. If the data gathered is from the past, as with historians, so it can, uh, it, it does not limit to them because engineers can use data for example, with reference data, such as the uh, wind tunnel experiment mentioned earlier, it is termed as a re retrospective study. On the other hand, if data collection is within the time frame of the study, it is called prospective. In an experimental setup, there is now the output of causation as the experiment okay uh, wait wait so the experimental uh, setup now has causation because the experimental subjects of the study are randomly assigned to treatments. The explanatory or independent variables are said to cause an effect to the response or dependent variables in the subjects. Okay, let us uh, illustrate these two examples. Suppose uh, the research problem is to determine if a new formulation of fertilizer improves the yield of uh, tomato food. In, an, uh, in a simple observational study, what can be done is to ask for the tomato farmers to decide if they want to use the newly formulated fertilizer. Some uh, farmers will be willing while others won't be. After the harvest, data of tomato fruit yields from farmers who use the fertilizer will be compared with the data from those who did not make use of the fertilizer. In this kind of setup, the new fertilizer may be associated or correlated to the improvement in to tomato fruit yield. In the case of an experimental study, okay, two setups of samples are taken from randomly selected tomato plants in a uh, given population. One sample set is then given the fertilizer while the other deprived. After harvest, fruit yield between the two samples are compared. If the fertilizer improved the fruit yield or not, causation is achieved. Difference between the two is that in the uh, experimental study, the application of the fertilizer was controlled and thus can be said to cause a specific effect based on the variables observed. There are certainly more variables to this kind of study. And while observational studies are simpler, experimental studies can further be suited to isolate variables like the uh, variety of tomato can be varied and observed so that yield improvement can further be related to the variable of tomato variety. Experimental setups on the other hand can be exhausting, expensive, and time consuming compared to observational studies. Do take note that uh, observational studies can also lead to causal inference, but that is not a topic beyond uh, the uh, beyond uh, beyond this course. Uh, the okay, um, the data collected can be grouped into variables. For example, uh, take the study on the effect of light color to the yield of lettuce in a controlled environment vertical growing scheme. The various colors of light used are data themselves and can be collectively termed as the variable light color. Okay, the yield that can be measured by uh, the mass of lettuce leaves is the data and can be collectively called the variable mass yield. In researches, variables can be categorical or numerical or qualitative and quantitative respectively, okay? 
With qualitative variables, data values are not numerical but can be categorized. The categories can be either non-numeric uh, non descriptors or numeric codes. Quantitative variables indicate the quantity or amount of a characteristic. Thus, variable data values are always numeric. Uh, nominal variables are labels, names, or categories. Analysis of this kind may involve frequencies, counts of observations. Data values can therefore be categorized. Okay. Ordinal values are also labels, but with implied ordering. Difference between the two labels is meaningless. Discrete variables take on one of a specific or finite set of numeric values. Lastly, continuous variables take on any of an infinite number of values within a given range. The difference between discrete and continuous is that values with the latter can be contiguous. It is important to know that uh, wait, what variable one is studying to determine which type of analysis is uh, uh, most appropriate for the variable. Uh, here are examples of where we can practice classifying variables. Uh, gender, which can be, uh, which can take as many values now with the LGBT, LGBTQ plus movement will remain a nominal variable. Each value is distinct and does not have order. But for some feminists, uh, some feminists claim men are superior, so they take arms, but that is the, the topic of the subject, okay? Next is marital status. Again, this is uh, nominal because it is proven that the wife is the, <laughs> wait, uh, unless it is proven that the wife is on the higher ground, which most men claim, then this, is, this will remain nominal. Age, as of last birthday, is discrete because it is commonly expressed as integer values with no decimal values to indicate days and presumably hours, minutes, and seconds. Weight, unlike age, is continuous because it can have uh, decimal values or values in between discrete uh, integer values. Household size is discrete. Who has counted half humans as 0 0.5? Okay, zip code and IQ are discrete. Temperature, uh, same with weight, is continuous. Religious affiliation is nominal, while uh, volume is continuous. Your grade in the subject is discrete. Your runtime in minutes is discontinuous. Okay, the last two variables, torsional and relative humidity, which humidity, which are uh, engineering parameters, are also continuous. So we, we have covered the first topic of the course. In the next lecture, we will begin with the next topic on uh, probability. I will see you in the next uh, lecture.